We generally get to see ACL tears when more commonly in contact sports, um, meaning field sports such as soccer, field hockey, uh, lacrosse, and also basketball as well. They don't necessarily always happen due to contact. They can happen due to non-contact, meaning that somebody plants their leg and then just cuts and tries to go in a different direction and the knee doesn't want to go in that same way. Um, also, it's more generally common in women's sports and a lot of that has to do with just the quadriceps and hand strength proportionality of strength and a lot of times women tend to be more quad dominant, meaning that the muscles in the front of their thigh are more strong than their hamstrings in the back of the thigh. When I tore my ACL, it was a very weird feeling. I remember feeling a crack and thinking that kind of hurt and I tried to run and I couldn't run. The general recovery plan for someone who tears an ACL is the first step is just making sure that you have the correct diagnosis, meaning that an MRI is done, because that's pretty much the only way that you can actually diagnose the injury, and making sure that there's not other tears, meaning in another ligament or in the meniscus, which is the cartilage that cushions the joint between your thigh bone and your lower leg bone. Surgery is always warranted with an ACL tear, um, there's no way to fix it. It doesn't grow back on its own. It doesn't heal. It needs to be surgically repaired. And generally, the rehab takes quite some time, and it's usually 8 to 10 months on average. Um, you have to start off with pre-rehabilitation before surgery in order to gain some of that strength back that was lost due to muscle cells dying due to inactivity. In order to, uh, to prevent ACL injuries or to strengthen the musculature around the joint, it's an interesting process because you've got the knee joint in that long kind of position between two long bones, which makes it susceptible to that injury. So you want to strengthen the muscles around there, and specifically the hip joint. So we'll do exercises to strengthen the glutes, strengthen the hamstrings. To prevent injury, we like to use certain warm-up techniques, prehab techniques, uh, reactive drills. So the warm-up's important. You want to increase the temperature of the muscle, Get, get your body moving, but it's mainly to get familiar with those movement patterns um, and to inhibit certain organs that are in the musculature. So static stretching is kind of being gone away from and we want to use more dynamic tasks because we'll put the muscle in a more or a safer position and a safer activation pattern um, before activity. So we'll do sort of movements that will mimic what we're going to do in the workout or before a game, um, reactive drills such as plyometrics um, and landing tasks that will get the athlete familiar with, um, again, the movement patterns and the landing tasks that are associated with their sport.